Welcome to this tutorial on understanding your regional air quality using satellite imaging. We hope this video will give you the tools needed to access and understand your exposure to large-scale sources of particulate matter in the air so that you can make more informed decisions about your outdoor activities. This video is presented by RTI International and is the second tutorial in a three-part series that teaches how to use both on-ground and satellite data to understand air quality. Thank you to NASA for supporting citizen science and funding this project. Countless particles are suspended in our air at all times, including pollen from plants, emissions from motor vehicles and industry, as well as seasonal wildfires that produce smoke that can travel thousands of miles. These particles, particularly those around 2.5 micrometers in diameter and smaller, called PM2.5, can cause health problems when their concentration in the air gets too high. To understand your risk of exposure to PM2.5, there are many online resources you can use daily to check the particle concentrations in your region. This tutorial will show you how to easily explore the real-time imagery from NASA's satellites. In our first video, we showed you how to access data from ground-based low-cost purple air sensors. The link to this video can be found in the description below. You can use satellite imaging to confirm observations you're seeing in our on-ground sensor data. Also, there are many locations on our planet that do not have ground-based monitoring. In these and other cases, it can be useful to see what NASA satellite imagery can tell us about a region's air quality. In August 2020, thunderstorms ignited numerous wildfires across the states of California, Oregon, and Washington, burning more than 10.2 million acres or 41,000 square kilometers of land. Using NASA satellite imagery, you can detect fires like these from satellite, identify their location on the ground, track the smoke, and assess the air quality degradation from the smoke. There are many satellites and online tools from NASA, NOAA, and other agencies. We'll focus on Suomi NPP satellite observations and use NASA's WorldView tool to assess the fires. Start by navigating to worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov. At the bottom of this interface is the date and recent history timeline. This can be changed by either using the date on the left or using the slider bar across the bottom. You can also change the units of the slider bar by using the selection list in the bottom right corner. The WorldView data available online goes back to the year 2000, which is when the MODIS on the Terra satellite began making measurements. On the left side of the screen are different layers of information you can choose to display. For any data viewing, you can also choose a base layer or not. The base layers option includes true color imagery from four satellite sensors and they take images at different times of the day. Terra, MODIS, supplies images in the local morning across the world. Aqua MODIS supplies afternoon images and is within 15 minutes of Suomi NPP VIRS. You can also select another data layer to superimpose over the base layers, called overlays. In the top right of your window, you can also now search a location on the map by name or latitude and longitude, for example, Los Angeles, California. You can also drop a marker on the map and it will display the city name and coordinates in the pop-up window. Also in the top right, Using the curly arrow icon, you can create a permanent link to this map view for sharing in reports or on social media. Now that you know the basics of the interface, let's look at specific data. You can display fire detection on the map by following these steps. First, change the base layer to Suomi NPP VIRS. We'll use this satellite because it has a higher resolution than MODIS and makes fire detection easier. Also, the MODIS satellite has a smaller imaging swath which causes what is called orbital gap and leaves blank areas on the larger map view. You can make navigating around the map easier by adding the reference layers of place labels and coastlines, borders, roads. Zoom your map to the Redding, California area, or you can reach it by using the search box. Next, change the date to September 7th, 2020 via the menu in the bottom left corner. Then click Add Layers. Under Air Quality, click to Fires and Thermal Anomalies. 
Then select Suomi NPP Veers and Fires and Thermal Anomalies Day and Night 375 meters. This will display fires detected by satellite within 24 hours. Each satellite orbits twice in a 24-hour period, so this will provide the single day and single night assessment of the last 24 hours. You can also select the day and night options separately and then easily compare the fire anomalies as individual layers. After closing that window, you'll see additional layer options in the box on the left and also see the detected fires and thermal anomalies on the map. The fire detections show up as red dots on the map. If you click on a red dot on the map, a pop-up box will open that shows you the data for that anomaly, the location, and all the satellite data that were used to derive if that pixel was a burn. Keep in mind that the number of red dots on the screen do not necessarily equate to individual fires because the satellite is only reporting image pixels in which a thermal anomaly was detected. You can identify smoke by looking for visible features. As it does in person, smoke on satellite imagery appears gray and hazy. This is not to be confused with clouds, which should appear white in the image. Depending on the type of fuel burning in a particular fire, the smoke color can vary. For example, smoke from an oil fire will appear dark black in the visible satellite imagery. Try tracking down smoke in different parts of the country and assess air conditions on other days by changing dates on the date menu or via the scroll bar on the bottom of the screen. Finally, let's look at how to display aerosol index. Start by clicking Add Layer, Air Quality, Aerosol Index, and select the Suomi NPP OMPS layer of aerosol index. We'll use OMPS because it's on the same satellite as VIRS, which is the base layer we're using. Next, set the date to September 7, 2020. This layer being on the top makes it difficult to see where you are on the map. So, drag the aerosol index layer to the bottom of Overlays. You may have to uncheck the option of Group Similar Layers to perform this action. The aerosol index is sensitive to smoke aerosols, and the darker red color on the map indicates very high concentrations of smoke in the atmosphere. There's another measure of particle matter in the atmosphere called aerosol optical depth. In this case, we are using aerosol index because it's more sensitive to absorbing aerosols such as smoke. Aerosol index is calculated from measurements in the UV wavelength. To learn more, you can click the information button that shows up when you move the cursor over the aerosol index layer. You can explore how the smoke travels by zooming your map out and changing the date at the bottom of the screen. Some smoke travels very long distances from the origin fires. Observing fires and smoke from the satellite perspective can help us see the big picture relationship between a fire's location and how weather influences smoke movement. You can share fire and smoke behavior observations from Worldview by creating an animation in GIF format over time. Select the Setup Animation Camera Icon button next to the date at the bottom of your screen. Set your date range that you want to capture. You could try September 7th to October 7th of 2020, for example. Once you've created the time range you like, select the button called Create an Animated GIF on the right side of the Animation Settings box. You can use this GIF file to share on social media or in a presentation. We hope this tutorial has helped you understand how to access fire and smoke-related information from NASA satellites. In part three of this series, we'll look at these events using both on-ground sensors and satellite imaging. You can access all videos from this series on our YouTube channel in our Tutorials playlist. The link to this playlist will appear in the top right of your screen. Thank you for your interest and your contribution to citizen science.